Hello, welcome to this uh, watercolour tutorial. By popular demand, I'd like to talk a little bit about the materials that I use and show you some past paintings and what I was aiming for. In terms of the paper, I like to use Arsh 300 pound rough paper. It's very robust, as you can see in here. You can end up painting on both sides if you're practicing for instance, to use less. And um, it comes in large sheets that you can cut down to the size you need, or it comes in blocks. And that is spelled A-R-C-H-E-S, made in France, the same factory since 1492. I also like to use Winsor & Newton Artist Quality Paints. Use your three primary colors to mix up all the colors you need. I even do that for black. I don't use a lamp black, for instance. If I want a black, then I'll use some French ultramarine and some light red or Indian red, something like that, makes for a very good black. I find that it has a better tone to it and not so stark. So there's an array of Winsor & Newton artist quality paints. The brushes that I like to use the most are Pro Art. They come in various qualities, um, so you've got choices to make to suit your pocket. And I've got mop type brushes, and then go into the smaller rounds, like a 10 there. And then they've got flat brushes, and also the usual smaller pointed. The number four is, is used a great deal by most artists. It's a very, very fine detail. You drop down to a number one or even a zero. So as the materials that I use, I like as much as possible to do the English style of watercolor painting where you leave the white of the paper. Uh, it's not any gouache or any other pigment, opaque pigment, just the paper. Uh, there are a few exceptions that occur, but that's what I do in the main. So this is a village street in St. Augustine, a great place to visit, been there many times. It's the oldest street in the USA, first occupied by the Spanish in 1565. So what I've achieved here, hopefully, is a feeling of coming into the street. You've got your various lines here and leading to vanishing points in the distance here. Hopefully that draws you in. It's very colourful. Obviously a fairly advanced type of painting. A lot of accurate pre-drawing by pencil. And then many layers of washes to achieve the overall effect and variety in that subject. Then I have uh, something quite different. This is Malta. I've been there many times. This is St. Paul's Cathedral. Just like to talk a little bit about positioning of a principal subject. Obviously, it's old cathedral and part of the town there. But here's the principal subject. If you think of a square in the middle of your painting, and then ideally your principal subject would be at one of those four points. And here, I've got the main part of the cathedral and where it's elevated, we're down here looking up to it. Then I have an entirely made up scene. This is a deer startled in the woods. This is an exceptional situation where I've placed the subject right in the center. I wanted to show you a contrast in that respect. And so we have a very light background. We have the trees here and then getting more and more faint mellow in the distance as you would expect to see and a slight mist coming off. A little tiny squirrel here for actual uh, additional interest. So that's an exception where I have placed something in the middle. Then this one is the Arc de Triomphe for Long de Chantelisse in France. There is an instructional tutorial that I've done for this. Um, it's well worth watching. I think it'll be very helpful to you. So a slightly more advanced one again. It will show you how to achieve this lovely light effect on the lights that are coming on in the early part of the evening. How to achieve this wet pavement with the reflections of the various people's clothing coming off of that. 
And as you can see, we've got a situation where we're walking towards the Arc de Triomphe and you've got lines coming down this way and so forth and these coming off where the lamps disappear into the distance. I think that um, instructional tutorial is worth well worth watching. Then we'll finish with this one. This is Hawaii uh, Greenback Turtles. I've got um, the, the beach here and the sand dunes and then the ripples of water upon the surface as it meets the beach to help uh, indicate the ocean down here underneath the sea and to give that feeling of depth. And then colorful coral at the bottom offset against the nice turtles and uh, in that video i give tips as well about how to achieve a nice coral effect in in doing such a painting for instance using a stippled uh, hard haired brush here and uh, using it in this fashion etc but please have a look at that one as well if you do like and subscribe then you'll be notified of all future videos and it's all entirely free so I hope you found that useful and I will be doing a series of these showing um, past paintings and what I've hoped to achieve and how have I have approached the painting. So please look forward to the next issues. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.